Okay, I would like to discuss a more complex type of settlement problem. And it has to do with the multiple application of fill. In other words, what we're going to find is that typically in practice, these fill settlement problems are more complex than just apply the fill, wait, end of story. A lot of times it involves putting a little bit on at a time and um, sometimes even removing part of it and adding more and it's just it can be there are usually multiple steps involved and we need to be able to determine um, what is our settlement or what we're going to call compression of the clay layer because the definition of settlement becomes more complex when we put on multiple fills so this is an example of a situation where here we have clay with sand at the t equals zero minus case. Then at t equals zero plus, we apply two meters of what we're calling a first fill. And that's going to remain for six years. So we have the same figure at t equals 6 minus. Then at 6 years, we put on another 2 meters of another fill, and we leave it there for 15 years. These are the soil properties, unit weights, basically. The water table... There's my water table there. So everything else is dry, so we're going to use the dry weights for the fill and the sand. Saturated weight for the clay. Our goal will be to find the clay thickness at t equals 15 years. So, in other words, right now the clay thickness is that, which is 4 meters. The question is, um, what is the clay thickness at 15 years? We have the clay properties, C epsilon R, C epsilon C, sigma prime P, coefficient of consolidation. We're going to take our point of interest at the center of the clay layer, which we're calling 8. So notice that, you know, we have zero at the top there, then two, four, six, eight, ten. So everything's sort of evenly spaced. It's just by coincidence in this problem. Okay, so what's the methodology that we want to use here? Oh, let, let me add that, uh, what is it? It's, it's single drainage, right? So single drainage... H is 4 meters, so HDR is 4 meters. What we're going to do is we're going to set up two time, two time scales. We're going to have T1 and T2. What is T1? T1 is going to be our normal time scale in the sense that this is, this is what's listed here, basically. So T1 is that time scale. So we have 0 minus, 0 plus, 6 minus, 6 plus, and 15 for that time scale. Then we're going to create another time scale that starts at 6 plus to 15 years. So the second time scale, T2, well, yeah, at, at 6 minus, we call it 0 minus. At 6 plus, we call it 0 plus. At 15 years, then it's only going to be 9. Associated with that, we're going to create a capital T1 and a capital T2. Looks like that. 
that's easy enough. So in other words, I'm going to use the, you know, this is six minus. Uh, well, I put in six here. But so this is my C sub VT over HDR squared to get our capital T. Um, so we're going to use six there, and then we, we're going to use six again. So in other words, this, this are the same. No time has passed, so the, you know, uh, we get the same number there. And then here we're using 15 to get my capital T1 of 0.469. We're going to do the same with T2, so 0 minus is 0, 0 plus is 0. And then we're going to use the 9, we're going to use the 9 there to get a capital T2 of 0.281. At the same time, we're going to create a UXS1 and UXS2. How are we going to do that? Well, remember, the whole key to these problems is getting the UX. So, in other words, this is the whole game here, once again. We have the UXSs. We've solved our problem very easily. And what do we do? Well, notice the, the key, in a way, is to use the is to get this uxs initially and essentially the uxs initially for that how did we get that well here's our first fill our first fill has a dry unit weight of 12 we're applying two meters so we get two times 12 for that one 24 The second fill, again, is also 2 meters, but it has a unit weight of 16. So we're, gonna, we're putting that on at 6 plus years. So it's going to be, and we're calling that 0 plus, so it's going to be 2 times 16, 32, right there. Prior to that, all, you know, we don't have anything for any UXS2. Then how do we get the um, UXSs at the various times? Well, what do we do? We use the 0.188 to get that, 0.188 to get that, the 0.469 to get that. Well, okay, so I didn't, maybe I should make it more. We use the 0.188 to get the 0.58 on our chart. The 24, of course, comes from right there. And then we use the 0.469 on the chart to get 0.29. And again, we have the 24 there. Let's take a look at it. So remember, when we... Um, First of all, as I mentioned, it's single drainage, right? Single drainage. So if that's single drainage, then what we're doing is we're crossing off the bottom part. We don't look at that at all. And so this is the bottom of the clay. This is the middle of the clay where we're interested in. And we, um, we come along, I think it was 0.188, come over here. We're at capital T of 0.188. Go up there, we get 0.58. Then we were at, um, well, let me see, what was the other? The other value here was 0.469. So I come in the middle of the clay, point, oops, 0.469. Read off 0.29. So we get 0.58, 0.29 for the two we just did. And there are 0 0.58, 0 0.29. Our last one, 
then is we had 0.281 for capital T2. If we do that, we should get 0.46, so 0.281. Come through the middle of the clay. Point two eight one. Oops. Point two eight one. We had point four six. Just as we've been doing it before. So I use the point four six here, and I use the thirty two because we have the thirty two as the excess pore pressure for part one. So I get my UXS1s, I get my UXS2s, I'm going to get my U water table, I'm going to add up all my U's. So we're going to do exactly what we, have, what we always do, so UXS1, UXS2, just as we had before. The U water table, we get that, straightforward, I get a U. So my U is going to be the sum of UXS1, UXS2, and U water table. Then, uh, I have to do this spreadsheet, it gets to be pretty big because I can't put it all at once. I, um, now what do I do? <laughs> well, okay, I've got to get my sigma v. How do I get the sigma v? I look at each correct, each figure. So, in other words, again, t1 equals 0 minus, I look there. 0 plus. I look here to get my sigma v. At 6 minus, I look here. At 6 plus, I look here. At 15, I look here. So I get all my sigma v's by simply looking at the correct figure. Then I simply use sigma v prime is equal to sigma v minus u and I get my I get all these values now notice again as we found before at t equals 0 minus and t equals 0 plus the effective stress doesn't change it's the same why? because no time has passed if we remember, the effective stress does not change. If no time goes by, there's no change in effective stress because there's no opportunity for the pore pressure to dissipate. In other words, the pore pressure takes all of the load and that means that the soil particles don't take any of the load. So there's no change in effective stress when no time passes. So what we see is the same thing occurring when I go from 6 minus to 6 plus. What happens? These two numbers are also the same. Again, because no time has passed. And it will always be that way. So we get these numbers, 34.4, 68.7 4, is my last one. That's these values. Then what do I do? Then I'm going to put those values onto my epsilon v um, diagram. And we can compute um, the, what we're going to call the strain, and then a delta h. So, um, notice, I'm not, let's see, 34.4 um, is our sigma prime i. We were given 35 as being the sigma prime p, so that's a given. So, and then we have our final of 68.7 over here. Those are, we don't really need to use this 44.5 for this particular problem, but I'll show you where the intermediate value can come into play. But for this one, we don't have to worry about. 
So we're just doing this portion, which is, um, you can all do this now, C epsilon R, then it's log 35 over 34.4, C epsilon C, 68.7 over 35. You can all get that. We get our delta H is H epsilon V. So it starts out at 4.055. <laughs> and um, we get our change in clay thickness is this at 15 years. And that means that the clay thickness at T equals 15 years. Uh, it starts out at 4. We have the change. We get 3.777 meters. We have to look at it that way, like I say, because it's difficult to find the beginning of when we're talking about settlement. So we, always, we look at these problems as the change in the clay thickness or the new clay thickness, and we work with that. All right, I'll stop there.